Welcome to PR After Hours, your twice weekly cocktail of business, PR, and marketing tips hosted by me, Alex Greenwood. Every week, we bring you virtual happy hours featuring business advice from entrepreneurs and leading thinkers in PR, marketing, and business. We're going to get started in just a moment, so stick with us. Okay, who has a podcast, then writes an ebook about podcasting and doesn't do an audiobook version of it? Well, not me. I've done that. In fact, I'm very excited to tell you, dear listeners, that the podcast option, my recent top selling ebook on podcasting, my journey through 15 years as a podcaster, broadcaster, host, guest, and observer, is now an audible audiobook. It's really, really, really exciting for me to be able to present this to you through Audible, uh, which is available on Amazon.com, where the ebook link is as well. And in this fast listen, my experience uh, comes to you through stories, practical tips and advice from my hundreds of hours as a guest, producer, podcast host, and more. And the podcast option, if I say so myself, is mandatory listening for those new to podcasting. And it should be a welcome addition to veteran podcasters library. So check out the podcast option read by yours truly, Alex Greenwood, or as they say there, the J. Alexander Greenwood, because that's my pen name. And that's a long story, which if you dig through my podcast, eventually you'll find out what that means. But the point being today, the podcast option is available now as an audible audiobook. I've got a link in the show notes to make it easy for you. Please do me a favor, go get that audiobook. Or if audiobooks aren't your bag, there's also a link for you to get it as an ebook. Again, the podcast option. I certainly hope you will choose it. You know, I've done a fair amount of speaking myself and, uh, just as an anecdote about public speaking, I was all set to go to roll out my new crisis communication planning service. And I was booked at several regional conferences and some local conferences and things. Of course, this happened (laughs) uh, right before the uh, pandemic had other ideas. So a lot of my public speaking went to the webinar, went to Zoom. But you know what? I'm ready to get back out there and flex some uh, verbal muscles again. I'm ready to get out there and speak. And I know a lot of you listeners out there do a lot of speaking. And that's why I'm excited to have Steve Markman with us today on the show. He has over 30 years of experience in the speaker and conference business. He's the founder and president of Markman Speaker Management, LLC, a multi-service speaker agency based in Boston with an international clientele. He has helped hundreds of executives, principals, entrepreneurs, and authors land speaking engagements, working with all industries and professions. His customized coaching and training service teaches people how to successfully obtain speaking engagements. And that's, boy, that's half the battle right there. The firm is also Speakers Bureau Division, providing keynote speakers for organizations worldwide. And earlier in his career, Steve headed up the conference divisions of leading organizations, including the Conference Board and Comdex. Well, I think we're in good hands, uh, fellow speakers, as we welcome to the virtual lounge, Mr. Steve Mark. Thank you, Alex. Good to be here. It's good to have you here. So uh, is public speaking dead or are we being pre uh, premature? No, I think it's uh, very much alive. It just uh, shifted from uh, people in an audience to uh, people in a little black box on your uh, kitchen table or your office or wherever you might be, uh, where your computer or laptop is. And um, I actually think uh, that there are more speaking engagements and more speaking opportunities now than pre-COVID simply because um, of the lack of in-person uh, opportunities and uh, associations who typically have these conferences wanting to get uh, more in touch with their members and their prospective members. And so they've actually created more of these virtual events uh, and webinars and so forth. And uh, there are uh, many more of them and they want more speakers. Uh, so I think there are a lot of opportunities out there and uh, it's not dead at all. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, um, it's it's great. I've had actually it's it's been kind of nice to be a speaker virtually because uh, we were kind of 
kidding around before we started here, you know, we, we could put on our zoom shirt and we can <laughs> get down to business and do these things. Uh, and you don't have to drive anywhere and all that. Although, you know, the other side of that, of course, is you, you can often miss out on a lot of great, uh, meetings with people and that kind of thing. And I don't think anything replaces that, but let's talk about why, why speaking, why it's a valuable endeavor. What, what's the, what's the, what is the, the big reason you think speaking is important for executives, entrepreneurs, et cetera? Sure. Well, the speaking industry um, has uh, really grown um, ac- exponentially over, over the years. And the primary reason for um, what I do, for example, is to get uh, uh, speaking for PR, uh, marketing, business development, lead generation, thought leadership. So it's sort of all of those things wrapped up in one. And uh, there's a whole separate industry, as you know, for paid speakers, people who uh, make most of their income as a result of speaking. It's almost like a separate industry. But for your listeners who are uh, in PR and executives um, who uh, want to uh, get exposure, uh, speaking is is one of you know several different ways, along with writing and other ways, uh, to get great exposure. And um, better than an article, uh, you have an opportunity to be in front of somebody, whether it's in person or virtual. You're still in front of somebody, and so there's that instant uh, communication where someone uh, who's speaking can establish credibility for whatever their expertise is. And uh, if they want to, if they're a consultant and they want business uh, to come of it, uh, what better way to demonstrate expertise than speaking and have someone at the end of the day say, can I have your card? I want you to come into my company and uh, tell me uh, how to uh, do what I what I need to do better. Uh, That that sort of thing. Yeah, I can attest to this. I gave a talk to the local, well, not local, but a nearby city's IABC group about crisis comm and within about uh, two months I was asked to bid on a project for a pretty prominent uh, business in that city who their vice president had seen me speak and I can attest to that that you're going to get yourself out there in ways that I think um, through speaking because people people feel and Steve you correct me if I'm wrong please but I think people even if it's in person yes for sure and definitely and I think the virtual way and I've learned this also through podcasting there is a for want of a better word, intimacy that develops between people. If you if you click with somebody when you're speaking, if you look them in the eye, if you connect with them on that level, if they, they look at you and they think that person, she's trustworthy, that person, she knows her stuff, she's credible, I want to talk to that person. Would you say that's a, a fair uh, 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 description of what can happen? Yeah, I think it, uh, it is. And, and it, it also gives uh, people um, uh, some confidence that what they're learning from the speaker is something that's going to be uh, uh, true for them. So, um, you know, a lot of uh, speakers are, have this fear that uh, they, they have to reinvent something or, or invent something and, and, and so have some startling revelation when in fact, many times people are simply attending a session or a conference because they want validation that what they're doing in their company, for example, whether it's a, you know human resources or marketing or whatever the case may be, uh, that they're, the programs in their own companies um, are working and that they're doing the right thing. And uh, having somebody up there talking to them about those uh, sorts of programs and what works and what doesn't work um, gives them a good feeling of confidence when they leave and they just need one or two nuggets uh, of information like that, and and they're happy, and and so it's a service also that speakers I think are are doing in addition to uh, getting exposure for themselves. Yeah, it's that great positive reinforcement, but there's also that whole thing about not being a prophet in your own land, right? Um, where I've had I've been brought into a manufacturing concern a few years ago, and the. It was a younger, new guy, a new com- comms and marketing guy, and he was talking to me. He says, I've worked with a lot of engineers, and they don't seem to fully get what I'm talking about when I talk about what they do and how it affects marketing. Can you come in and give us a talk? 
and just kind of hit these points for me and put your spin on it and your knowledge. And I did that. And the guy, the guy, and it was a tough room. I got to tell you, it was a tough room. Engineers are the <laughs> toughest nuts, but well, okay. I started oh, yeah. my career. I started my career actually at a medical school. Doctors are tough, but, um, but engineers are right there with them. Uh, but I got to tell you a couple of weeks later, the guy called and said, man, thank you. Because it's like, She's, he's like, I felt like I was, you know, shouting from the rooftops for six months, but then you come in and you say basically what I've been saying and it sunk in. Right. Exactly. It's sort of like you you know, you, you can tell your kids a million times to do something or something is a certain way and you're just being ignored. And then somebody, one of their friends tells them or some other adult tells them, oh yeah, that, I, I knew that <laughs> it's the same sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. When you talk about the no fee aspect, Steve, too, I, I think, that's interesting because I have a friend, she, she's a paid speaker and I've been paid some honoraria to, to do speaking here and there, but it's not really my thing. You know, I'm not like making my living on speaking, uh, but I'm more like what you discussed, which is using it for lead generation and building, building my pre- credibility, et cetera. Um, but there is, there can be that happy medium. Do you ever tell your clients, Hey, it's okay to ask for an honorarium or do you just kind of say, look, you're, you're doing this. You're, you know, how do you, how do you broach it with your clients about this kind of thing? Sure. So it depends on what their objectives are and what they're looking for and what they, what part of their career they're in. I always tell people don't don't ever rip up the check. Famous words from Steve <laughs> Markman. Um, so most conferences, um, if you look at the greater scheme of all, all the conferences in the world, uh, ninety five percent of speaking engagements are unpaid. Um, when I throw that statistic out, people look at me uh, in a strange way, but it, I believe it is true. Um, I believe that um, it is 95% are unpaid because um, if conference organizations simply don't have the wherewithal to pay every speaker they have. I used to, as you mentioned, run all these big conferences in my, my prior uh, conference life, and um, we just couldn't pay uh, even a big conference like Comdex. Uh, they only were able to pay the keynotes and, and that's it. Uh, and that's that's typical. Uh, now, there are smaller conferences where you could get small amounts of money, you know, maybe $1,000 or $1,500 from an organization that is willing to, to pay you. Um, and that's fine. So I tell my clients, uh, always ask, uh, hmm. do you have a, uh, what is your policy on paying fees? What is your policy on paying travel expenses? And if they can do it and you get the exposure, best of all worlds. But you then you have to make a decision on what are the benefits of speaking. And if the benefits to speak are that if, for example, you're a consultant and you might land a six-figure consulting assignment as a result of speaking, then the couple thousand dollars you spent to get to uh, the West Coast uh, and stay at a, a hotel was worth it. Uh, so it really depends on each and every uh, speaking opportunity. Uh, and of course, if you're speaking into a laptop uh, on a virtual conference and you don't have to leave your uh, chair, then um, there's no cost involved at all and no downside, um, mostly upside other than you know an hour of your time perhaps. So it depends on the individual situation. Hmm, very good, very good. Um... How about a few, just a little mechanical things here, if we could, about some of these these speaking engagements. Uh, do you, when you're working with your your folks that you're, you're helping get, get out there, do you work with them on their actual presentations? Do you get down to the nitty gritty? Do you do that kind of coaching? So I personally don't. I have a network of folks that have spent their entire careers uh, doing just that, which is to um, do the uh, presentation uh, skills uh, versus um, the contents. So I spend a lot of time with my clients on their content and positioning it in a way that is uh, going to be sold as a good idea rather than a sales pitch and that sort of thing. But the actual mechanics of speaking, um, I leave to the, uh, the speaking experts uh, except with some exception of I've learned because I do a lot of public speaking myself, uh, some tricks of the trade for doing better Zoom uh, uh, presentations and um, looking at the camera and so forth and things that people never had to do before um, that I think are, are helpful. But for the most part, it's helping people understand the nuances and the actual 
um, processes and techniques of finding speaking engagements. Because, you know, Alex, the adage that nobody wants to speak, that it's one of the biggest fears in the world, um, is not always true. And there are a lot of people who do want to speak. It is very competitive to speak at a conference, uh, especially one that's uh, well known, has good uh, reputation, and is prestigious. They get a lot of applications to speak, even for you know no pay, of course. Uh, and so, um, teaching people how to do that, in addition to doing the work myself, um, especially for uh, smaller companies, is something that I, I find uh, is very helpful for them because it's not easy to understand how to work the system, if you will. And there is a system of getting in front of the right organizers and getting a proposal accepted. What do you think about things like TEDx? I think they're great. I mean, TEDx is, um, has a very specific audience. It, it's, uh, you know, it's more of, you know, people who have maybe have accomplished something or have advice for people, uh, uh, whether that's in science or the arts or, you know, some, some, something that's uh, going to help them in their uh, betterment of their, their, their lives. Um, they're not easy to get into. They're even more competitive than all the other conferences. You have to be, um, uh, have a very specific topic and they have their own rules and regs of what you can talk about and for how long and that sort of thing. But I, I think it's a good training ground for other speakers. And it's just another uh, part of the speaking mix that people can add to their speaking resume, if you will, that they've done because it is not easy to get. Is there probably a, a bedrock or a foundational layer of speaking that you would recommend people achieve before they come talk to someone like you? No, I have had people who have, uh, who are executives of companies that have uh, spoken at conferences many, many years, and they want to expand it. They want more of the, of these, they, 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 their, their company has decided, or their PR department has decided it's a good idea for them to, to get out and, and speak more and, and the company wants to grow and, and they figure this is a good way to demonstrate um, the, the, that the company exists. It's a great way to build visibility, not just for an individual, uh, a, a, uh, excuse me, great way to build visibility, not only for an individual, but for a, an organization, for a company. And I've had people who are just starting out They've never spoken once and they want to get that first speaking and they don't even know how to go about uh, getting it. Um, so it, it's really a, a range of, uh, of folks that I can uh, help. And, and again, it's the companies and the businesses as well as the individuals that can be helped. So it's building a personal as well as a uh, company or business brand. Yeah, and uh, you know, switching gears a little bit here. What if you're looking to find a great speaker? Well, you're you're in luck because Markman Speaker uh, Management. I mean, do you want an astronaut? They have an astronaut. They have entertainers. They have creativity experts, stress management, sports figures. I think I saw Terrell Owens is in your stable. Oh my gosh! Tell me a little more about that. Um, uh, what what's the uh, how big is the stable? If you can tell me, or at the very least, uh, how many different uh, subjects do you have here? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I probably have about 30 different uh, subjects. Um, uh, and yes, Ter Terrell Owens is one of my clients, as are some other former uh, athletes. I also have the um, uh, second woman ever to head an, an armed forces. She was the secretary of the Air Force under President Obama. Um, so it runs the gamut of types. I've, you know, Jeff Hoffman, the astronaut that you mentioned, uh, He's a five-time uh, walk-in space astronaut who uh, <laughs> developed the uh, the little box uh, along with his colleagues at MIT that uh, went to Mars. Uh, that's converting uh, nitrogen into oxygen. So, you know, it's a fun part of my business uh, because uh, these are all uh, mostly paid speakers. I have a relatively small amount of them, a small number of 70, 75 speakers. I, uh, unlike some giant speakers bureaus. It's the speaker bureau part of my business. And I probably know or have spoken to all of them uh, in one way or another. They've either been referred to me or I know them through being in the conference business for over 30 years um, and uh, have made some 
contacts with them. And uh, I uh, help uh, associations and companies uh, who are looking for a paid speaker to come in for an hour or so and be a keynote specifically. Uh, those are that uh, list of roster uh, of speakers um, in my stable that I can offer these um, associations and companies. Yeah, I mean, you've got it all here. Besides the bureau, you have training and coaching. Um, you you have uh, staff training as well. Uh, can you can you elaborate a little bit on staff training? Do you maybe I'm misreading it? Do you just go into like a company and start working with a team of people within there? How's that work? Yeah, so the staff are specifically um, for the most part uh, PR and marketing staff. So for example, I went into I'm based in Boston. I went into a large Boston law firm a couple of years ago, and I sat down with um, three or four. Uh, folks on the PR team, the uh, chief marketing officer, the chief development officer, and the director of PR. And uh, basically, I taught a half-day session. It's a uh, four-hour session where I sit down and uh, describe all the um, processes and tips of the trade uh, of getting their uh, partners uh, into speaking engagements because they, as the PR staff and marketing staff, they're the ones who are at the forefront of being responsible um, for getting the speaking engagements for the company, for their partners. Uh, very rarely will an executive do that themselves, especially in the larger companies. Um, it comes from the PR department. And they'll either do it internally or they'll outsource it to somebody like me. And then I realized a few years ago when I started this uh, service to do um, training and coaching that uh, some of them want to keep it internally, but they don't really know how to do it as well as they could. They don't have a good systemized approach. And so I go in and I teach them how to develop a system where they can then uh, go out and find speaking engagements for uh, the executives or uh partners of whatever firm they may have, whether it's a professional service firm or it's a software firm. I've done work for uh, IBM, Bank of America, Subaru, uh, law firms like uh, Ropes and Gray. So it really runs the gamut in, of folks that I can help. Yeah, so it's it's the DIY program, right? You have a couple of different Correct. versions, like one for two hours and one for four hours, right? Correct, correct. And, and it's, that can all be done virtually then? Oh yeah, and uh, since COVID, um, it's been 100% uh, virtual. Uh, I actually am doing uh, the um, two hour version uh, for a company in Turkey uh, next month uh, in wow. Istanbul. Um, she was introduced to me by a colleague of mine in, who's in uh, New York uh, and she had done a lot of work for her for a couple of years. And you know now I don't have to go to Turkey. Um, <laughs> and, and I just go into my little laptop and, and I'll do the two hour training of uh, how uh, they, they can get speaking engagements uh, for themselves. Hmm. I might have to I might have to talk to you about that uh, down the road a little bit. I'm interested All right. in seeing, seeing what you have to offer. Steve Marklin, uh, if they want to learn more, you've got a pretty nice uh, website there. What's that address? It's uh, www.markmanspeaker.com. And then from there, they can go into different links. I also do have a service for PR agencies themselves, where mm -hmm. I help agencies uh, by outsourcing the stuff that uh, for their clients. So I help find speaking engagements for the agency's clients. And there's a separate link um, from my website um, that they can go to from there. Steve, I'll put you on the spot here. If you were to offer just uh, just all of our listeners one piece of advice about speaking, what would it what would it be off the top of your head? Content. Content is king. It's an old saying, but it, it is. You, uh, you know, as, as a, they, they say, you, you can't kid a kidder. So um, when you try to pass off information that's not uh, germane or not current uh, or too simplistic to the wrong audience, um, it, it will uh, show up in the, in the reviews. Uh, so if you have a good non-sales pitch, good content, teach somebody something that they uh, can walk away with that they didn't know, good few nuggets of facts. Even if your delivery is not 100% great, your content will make up for it. Well, speaking of good content, I think we got a lot from you, Steve Markman. Steve Markman, he is the 
founder and president of Markman Speaker Management. And by the way, don't go worrying about scribbling down all those uh, www things. They'll be in the show notes at PRAfterHours.com. Steve Markman, I learned quite a bit, and I, I have a feeling I'll be in touch with you down the road. Thank you again for joining us here in the virtual lounge. You're very welcome, Alex. Thank you to you and your listeners. And if anybody has any questions or wants to just follow up with me, I offer a 15 minute, uh, no cost free session to answer their questions on the world of speaking and would uh, love to do that. And they can reach me through my website. Oh, you know what that means? Looks like it's last call here at your virtual lounge for PR news views and interviews. Don't forget, you can ask me a question anytime. You can do it through our Twitter account, which is at ours PR. Or even better, you can send me a message vocally. I would love to hear your voice and I'll answer it on the show. There's a link in the show notes. All you have to do is sign up through Anchor FM. It's free, doesn't take long and you record your message, I get the message, I will play your audio, just give me your first name and the city you live in, and then I will answer the question to the best of my ability right here on the show. Don't forget to, if you're enjoying this podcast, you can support it and help increase the frequency and value of the show. Just consider being a sponsor for your brand or your agency or just yourself because you're like, I like this show. Or just drop a few coins in the virtual tip jar. Either way, there's links in the show notes. Please check that out. All of that, of course, being in the show notes where you're listening right now or at PRAfterHours.com. I see that they're turning up the lights. Last call is over, and I've got to clean up this virtual lounge. And Until next time, I'm Alex Greenwood, and you've been listening to PR After Hours on Anchor FM.